Good morning, guys. It's Monday morning, and it is our third week not in school together, and I miss you guys so, so much. I'm sitting here in my room at my desk at home and just wishing that we were all at school together, and um, right about now we'd be doing reading groups and our reading rotations, and I wish that's what I was doing this morning. Um, but we can't be together because we got to keep everybody healthy and safe um, during this crazy time. Um, so I hope that you've been able to get lots of work done these past couple of weeks. Um, and I have some um, really fun things for you guys to do this week um, with new Letterland things you can do and some fun new reading things as well. Um, but we're going to get started this morning and um, we, have, we only have two chapters of Dr. Doolittle left. So let's go ahead and get started with chapter 20 this morning. It's called The Fisherman's Town. Gently then, very gently, the doctor woke the man up. But just at that moment, the match went out again, and the man thought that it was Ben Ollie, the pirate, coming back, and he began to punch the doctor in the dark. But when John Doolittle told him who it was and that he had his little nephew safe on his ship, the man was very glad and said he was sorry that he had fought the doctor. He had not hurt him much, though, because... Oh, excuse me because it was too dark to punch properly. Then he gave the doctor uh, a, a handshake and stood up. And the man told how the Barbary dragon had put him onto this rock and left him there when he wouldn't promise to become a pirate, and how he used to sleep down in this hole because there was no house on the rock to keep him warm. And then he said, For four days I have had nothing to eat or drink. There you are, said Jeff. What did I tell you? So they struck some more matches and made their way out through the passage into the daylight, and the doctor hurried the man down to the boat um, to get some soup. Uh, when the animals and the little boy saw the doctor and Jip coming back to the ship with a red-headed man, they began to cheer and yell and dance about the boat, and the swallows up above started whistling at the top of their voices, thousands and millions of them, to show that they too were glad that the boy's brave uncle had been found. The noise they made was so great that sailors far out at sea thought that a terrible storm was coming. And Jip was awfully proud of himself. Oh, though he tried very hard not to look conceited, which means like proud or like he's bragging. And when Dab Dab came to him and said, Jip, I had no idea you were so clever. He just tossed his head and answered, Oh, that's nothing special, but it does take a dog to find a man, you know. Birds are no good for a game like that. Then the doctor asked uh, the red-headed uh, red fisherman where his home was, and when he had told him, the doctor asked the swallows to guide the ship there first. And when they had come to the land that the man had spoken of, they saw a little fishing town at the foot of a rocky mountain, and the man pointed out the house where he lived. And while they were letting down the anchor, the little boy's mother, who was also the man's sister, came running down to the shore to meet them, laughing and crying at the same time. She had been sitting on a hill for twenty days, watching the sea and waiting for them to return. She kissed the doctor on the cheek so many times so that he giggled and blushed, and she tried to kiss Jip, too, but he ran away and hid inside the ship. It's a silly business, he said. I don't hold by it. Let her go and kiss Gub-Gub if she must kiss something. The fisherman and his sister didn't want the doctor to go away in a hurry. They begged him to spend a few days with them. So John Doolittle, uh, so John Doolittle and his animals had to stay at their house a whole Saturday and Sunday and half of Monday. And all the little boys of the fishing village went down to the beach and pointed at the great ship anchored there and said to one another in whispers, Look, that was a pirate ship. That was Ben Ollie's, the most terrible pirate that ever sailed the seven seas. That old man with the high hat who's staying up there, he took the ship away from him and made him into a farmer. Who'd have thought it of him? So gentle-like and all. Look at the great red sails. It, um, isn't she a wicked-looking ship? All those two and all those. Oh, cannot stop yawning this morning. So is Lady. All those two days and a half, the doctor stayed at the, at the little fishing town, and the people kept asking him out to tea and luncheon and dinners and parties, 
All the ladies sent him boxes of flowers and candies, and the village band played tunes under his window every night. At last the doctor said, Good people, I must go home now. You really have been most kind. I shall always remember it. But I must go home, for I have things to do. Then, just as the doctor was about to leave, the mayor of the town came down the street and a lot of other people in grand clothes with him. And the mayor stopped before the house where the doctor was living, and everybody in the village gathered around to see what was going to happen. After six boys had blown on shining trumpets to make the people stop talking, the doctor came out onto the steps and the mayor spoke. Dr. John Doolittle said he, It is a great pleasure for me to present to the man who rid the seas of the dragon of Barbary, the pirate, this little token from the grateful people of our worthy town. And the mayor took from his pocket a little tissue paper packet, and opening it, he handed to the doctor a perfectly beautiful watch with real diamonds in the back. Then the mayor pulled out of his pocket a still larger parcel, like a package, and said, Where is our... I uh, said, where is that dog? Then everybody started to hunt for Jip, and at last Dab Dab found him on the other side of the village in a stable yard where all the dogs of the countryside were standing around him, speechless with admiration and respect. Like, oh my God. And when Jip was brought to the doctor's side, the mayor opened the larger parcel, and inside was a dog collar made of solid gold. And a great murmur of wonder went up from the village people as the mayor bent down and fastened it um, around the dog's neck with his own hands. For written on the collar in big letters were these words, Jip, the cleverest dog in all the world. Then the whole crowd moved down to the beach to see them off, and after the red-haired fisherman and his sister and the little boy had thanked the doctor and his dog over and over and over again, the great swift ship with the red sails was turned once more toward Puddleby, and they sailed out to sea while the village band played music on the shore. The very last chapter is called Home Again. And it's only about four pages long. We'll have to finish it tomorrow. All right, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your Monday. Um, tomorrow will be Tuesday, and tomorrow night we're going to do a class um, FaceTime where we're all going to get to hang out, and I'm really excited. Um, so I'll see you guys tomorrow, and I hope you have a great day.